If you were no longer affected by the judgment of others and you stopped judging yourself, would you make different choices? Why make choices in your life based on judgments instead of on your awareness of what would create the life and living you desire? Everyone has the potency to make inspired choices. Get ready to listen, share, and experience the creativity that is you. Now, here is the host of Inspired Choices Radio Show, Possibilities Coach Christine McIver. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on a to zenfm Welcome, everyone. I'm so glad you're here with me, whether you're joining me live or you're joining in the replay. It's an amazing day to be in the world, and I am so excited about this show that has been percolating for some time. So if you uh, are joining live, you will know that last week, this show was actually going to be original broadcast. And there were some interesting creations that went on, and my body chose no. We're not going ahead. And so in being the dominant woman that I am, that I choose to be, I chose to say no, that I followed what was best for me in those moments. And sometimes I would call it being pathetic because I didn't choose to move forward. But no, for me, that was about being dominant. So it's really interesting how this has um taking on it life of its own. So tonight is pathetic or dominant. What are you choosing? And before we get into that, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself. I am a possibilities coach and I work with clients to co-create the living and loving that they desire with all the possibilities available in the universe. I am an Access Consciousness Certified Facilitator bars facilitator, body process facilitator, radio show host, as you know, producer as well. I build websites. I work with clients to create more of what they truly want to have put out into the world and don't know how to actualize it. I love creating and I love looking at what truly is possible and where you're limiting yourself and you want to stop that. So if you would like to learn how to change some of that in your life and in your business, please connect with me. Well, I do charge for my services because I am a damn potent woman. You do get the first five minutes for free always. So ask yourself, are you ready to change what's not working in your life? You can connect with me at inspiredvoices.ca. You can email me, Christine, at inspiredchoices.ca. Or you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, under my name or inspiredchoices.ca. And I would love to see what else is possible in the world with you. Some of the things that I've got coming up, and I'll mention a little later on in the in the show, but some of the things that I've got coming up that I'm creating is, um, first of all, I do the Access Consciousness classes, the BARS Foundation Level 1. And I'm so excited because the next two months, October, November, I have got five five days going on throughout Ontario, from Sudbury to Toronto to Cambridge to Kincardine to Madoc. We're all over the place creating and inviting people in to change, to change what's not working. So if you've heard about it and you'd like to know more, please ask, or you can go to at Christine McIver dot accessconscious.com to see all of those classes that we're creating. And if you are live today and you have a question, about anything we're talking about on the radio today, you can call in in the U.S. 815-880-8255 or Canada 613-800-8736 or you can Skype us at a to zenfm And if you're not in the chat room, well, you're missing out. Let me just tell you. We have so much fun in the chat room. I've got a bunch of people in there already and we start to play and laugh and it really does contribute so much to myself as a radio show host and all of the radio show hosts here on A to Zen, we just adore the con- contributions of all of our listeners when they come to play. So consider coming in A to Zen FM along the top bar. Just click on chat room, put in a name, and there you go. Okay, so today, pathetic or dominant, what are you choosing? Okay, so life sucks. Sometimes a lot, sometimes a little. Sometimes that is what it seems to be. Have you concluded that you have no choice? 
Would you like to change that or is that working for you? What does it mean to actually be dominant? So, so many times, at least in my life, when things were not going my way, when things seemed to be getting really heavy and I felt like nothing was happening that I really wanted to happen and I'd quote unquote done all of the right things that I should have done, I would go into this pathetic energy, nearly like the, why is this happening to me? I've done all the right things. I've been working hard. You know, like a three-year-old crying in the corner because somebody stole your toy. I would go into this pathetic energy, which felt like uh, being boxed into a corner that I didn't have a choice. When you are actually in that energy of pathetic, can you hear anything? Can you see anything? Can you actually see the choices around you? Can you even hear somebody, if somebody's waving a flag, hello, hello, over here, over here, can you? Or are you like head down, bawling, deciding, concluding that this is the end? This is it. I can't do anything else. Truth. Look at that. It's such a heavy energy, isn't it? When we are actually doing pathetic, we have bought a lie. Because if you were looking around the world and you were looking at just, let's just look at nature. A lot of us don't have a point of view about nature. So that's an easy place to look at when you're feeling stuck. So look at nature. Does nature lack in any way? Does nature ever say, well, you know, I really can't create any more leaves. Like, you know, I know it's springtime. I know all you Canadians, because if you're listening, I'm Canadian, and we get we get winter, baby, and we get quite the winter. Does does nature ever say, okay, you know what? This spring, we're really not going to create a lot of leaves. We're gonna we're just gonna leave all the the buds dormant. We're not gonna actually pop out those leaves. We're just gonna we're gonna hold them back this year. No. Does nature ever say? Okay, you know what? We've been rolling the ocean in. We've been rolling the ocean out. We've been flowing. We're going to stop flowing for a while. No. Nature does not stop that. Nature doesn't go pathetic. Nature just flows in another direction. Oh, you put up a wall there? Oh, we're just going to flow it over this way. We're just going to move. We're going to shift. We're going to see what else is possible. Nature doesn't stop. But whenever we as humans have something knock us down, we fall to our knees into pathetic so many times over and over again, believing that something can stop us. Is that really true? Can something ever stop you or do you actually have to agree with it? Do you actually have to buy into that bullshit that that is true? I love what Carol just said in the chat room, Carol. Unchangeable is unnatural. Hell yes. The one thing, the absolute one thing in the world that is changeable, that will always change, is change. Everything will constantly change. Everything is changing. And it's through our, and this is sometimes, okay, I'm jumping all over, blah, in my brain. So sometimes, when we were actually, oh my God, I'm going blank because there's so much coming in. So <laughs> if everybody could contribute right now, so this can all come out, okay? <laughs> so sometimes when we hit a wall, we, 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 we contract down, we pull it down, and then we decide that it can't change. And then when we decide that it can change, we start to make it so. But it's not true, because if you get the energy of that right now, it's nearly like a boiling pot, right? It, it, we believe, oh my God, I'm going to blow up. I'm not going to blow up. The top's going to blow off so everything can change. Even when a, oh, who was it? I don't know whether it was Gary Douglas, the founder of Access Consciousness, or, or Danielle Carter, but one of them, most recently, I heard them say, even when there is a forest fire, right? It's the forest fire clears the land and we as the humans go, oh my God, there's so much destruction there. Well, is there destruction or is there new space for new possibilities? 
seriously, your point of view on your patheticness, your point of view on change, your point of view on being dominant actually creates it. So what if you were to stand up and you were to literally move your ass to another seat in the room you're at and look at what's in front of you now, would you have a different point of view? Would you have a different energy? Truth. Yes, of course you would. You would have a different point of view. So when you are looking at anything that nature does and you immediately conclude it's a less than, it's a destruction, you start to lock it down and you buy into that bullshit. But if you would look at this with a totally with the curiosity of energy like, huh, what has this created? Right? Um, so I'm down in uh, Galveston, Texas. I need to put a drawl on that. I'm in Galveston, Texas right now with my girl. And we'd be at the beach. I don't know why I'm talking like this. We're at the ocean. And we were driving last night along this beautiful ocean coast. And how did I get so lucky to create this amazing life? I am so thrilled. Wow. And if you would like to learn more about this, please connect with me. But we were driving down this ocean, along the ocean. And she explained to me all uh, when the um, hurricane came in and everything got wiped out. And she says, oh, yeah. And she said two or three times, they always build them up bigger and better each time. And I looked at her and I said, well, how much are these hurricanes actually working for these business owners, right? And it was so light and it was so funny. But how much do the rest of us buy into, oh, my God, that's so terrible. And we go into that pathetic energy about anything that's created there. Do you guys get this? How much do we conclude when something changes that we actually decide it's good or it's bad, it's right or it's wrong? Every friggin' time. What would we actually be creating if we were looking at it with the curiosity of, Cool. What did this create? How can we really go to pathetic if we are actually choosing curiosity? We really can't. Because even if you're in your curiosity and you go, okay, I stubbed my toe. What did that create? A broken toe. It's just a broken toe. It's not a, I suck because my toe is broken. No, it's a, it's a fact. I've, I created a broken toe. So then you can choose how you're going to be with that. But when you immediately go to pathetic, you're stuck, right? So all of the places and spaces where you've concluded that anything that you've created, that nature has created, that people around you have created, that your lovers have created, that any of your choices have created are pathetic, can we please destroy and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Being curious makes me giggle. I can't be pathetic when I'm totally being curious. Thank you, Rhonda. It's so friggin' true. So how many of you would be willing, just for five minutes, to be curious? What am I creating by even listening to this radio show? Hmm. Cool. And everything that is, and everything that's brought up, and everywhere you can't find an answer, that you should have an answer, and you're pathetic because you don't have an answer, can we destroy it and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Whew! You know what's so funny? I just, side note, <laughs> you know what's so funny is when I create or my radio show creates these radio shows to be created by me, which I don't know how they're supposed to be created, I have no idea half the time what's wanting to be said. And when I'm in the middle of it and it's downloading to me as my mouth's opening more and more is just coming out, I just laugh because it's so so who's driving the bus, me or my radio show? All right, we are going to go to a short commercial. When we get back here, we're going to talk about being dominant and what that means and how much we do resistance around it and conclusion around what it means to be dominant. So you are listening to Inspired Choices radio show with your host, Christine McIver, here on a to FM, and we are talking about pathetic or dominant. So stay tuned. We will be right back. Many of us make choices in our lives based on the past or what others think. What would our lives be like if we made our choices based on what we desire in this moment? By tuning into Inspired Choices Radio Show with Possibilities Coach Christine McIver, you'll receive tools and inspiration you can use to do just that. 
You are an infinite being with infinite choices. Are you ready to create the life and living you truly desire? Listen for Inspired Choices Radio Show. It's body time. What would nurturing you and your body create in your life? Would you be willing to give yourself 30 days to find out? Four live calls and receive direct to your inbox each day a video, process loop, or activity designed to contribute to you. It's body time. What will 30 days of nurturing create in your life? Begins October 15th. To find out more, go to DanielleCarter.accessconsciousness.com. D-O-N-N-I-E-L-L-E. C-A-R-T-E-R dot accessconsciousness dot com. This is Inspired Choices Radio Show with Possibilities Coach Christine McIver. To participate in the program today, please call toll-free in the U.S. 815-880-8255. Talk or Canada 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us. Our Skype name is a2zen.fm. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. Well, here we are moving forward, pathetic or dominant. So before we went to commercial, we were talking... <laughs> We were talking about what it is to be pathetic and how we, being pathetic is actually buying into lies and it's going into conclusions. And it's actually a contraction. And we were talking about change and how that is the one thing that is consistently happening is change is always consistently happening. And what I'd like anybody that's listening right now, who right now, and it's not a wrongness, there is no judgment here at all. But anyone that is feeling this very deep, sad, pathetic energy and where you're feeling like you can't get up out of it, I just want to tell you that honestly, it can change very, very quickly. You do not have to stay there. And if staying there right now is what you're choosing, it's okay. But please know it can change. And if you are looking for ways to change it, please connect with me. I have programs. I've been doing coaching for, well, officially I've been doing program uh, coaching for more than eight years. And I was in human resources for 20 before that. I love working with people. And one of the areas of my life where I have struggled is with sadness. So I know this topic very intimately. So please connect with me, Christine at InspiredChoices.ca. What has really jumped up for me over um, the last three or four years in really desiring more and creating more is this dominance, the dominatrix energy. And if you know me, you'll know that I have a program called Be the Dominatrix of Your Life. And when I first put that out there, oh my God, they're in the chat room talking about my chocolates. (laughs) They're the best chocolates ever. And no, there's not going to be any left by the time I leave here. I'm loving them so much. But over the past number of years, as I've created this program and I started to put it out there, um, a lot of people went into a beyond. In fact, the very first time that I posted Be the Dominatrix of Your Life on Facebook, it was so funny because if you know me, I'm on Facebook all of the time. I'm posting things all the time and I get people liking it and, and commenting on all sorts of my posts. And that one, literally, you could hear this absolute crickets it was the funniest freaking thing i posted it and nothing and i kept looking at it and i was laughing i was laughing and laughing and laughing because i could perceive everywhere where people were going oh my god oh my god what is she doing what is she doing (laughs) what is that what is that and everyone went into conclusion and oh my god they were like running for the hills energy and it was very very funny and I've continued to talk about it, and I've I've been interviewed about it, and I'm writing a book about it, and it's very, very funny to me how much people go into resistance around this energy. So I really want to unlock this and really unpack it for people, because I, my point of view is, when we are resisting anything, it's sticking us. And when we're resisting being the dominatrix or the dominant Um, being of our own lives, we're actually shortchanging ourselves. 
So a lot of people, when they think of, first of all, a dominatrix, <laughs> when they think of a dominatrix, I'm sorry for giggling. No, I'm not. That's a lie. I like to giggle. That's who I be. Rhonda said, unpack your whips and paddles, ladies and gents. You won't regret it. True story. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. <laughs> when I don't even know what I was going to say. I love it. Being the dominatrix of your life is really about choosing for you. Most people, when they think of the dominatrix, they think of, seriously, a woman who is getting paid for sex, or it's a fetish of hers, where she has whips and chains, literally, and she just wants to dominate you. She may not even want to have copulation with you, but she wants to create pain in your body that actually turns her body on. That's what people think of when they think of dominatrix. Okay, that um, visual of this time and space in reality has been bastardized exponentially. What I'm talking about, and I'm going to read the definition of what dominant means. Dominant is an adjective which is most important, powerful, and influential. They are now in an even more dominant position in the market. Um, as a noun, a dominant thing in particular. So let's just look at this. Most important, powerful, and influential. If you were being dominant with your life, would you not be putting your life as the most important, powerful, and influential thing ever for you? What would that be like for you? I was actually on um, Rhonda's show this morning, Rhonda Burns, who has uh, potency is my game radio show and I actually said oh what was the topic of the show this morning does this ask make my butt look big and it was a great show by the way and I actually said that that putting me first in my life is the most important thing and you know I'm going to I'm just going to stop and I'm just going to tell you a little a little story about myself so um, I chose to marry two men that were not a, a great contribution to my life, um, except that they co-created these two beautiful children that I have now in my life. And through the creation of these children, I ended up being a single mom at two different stages in raising them. And um, it was a tough life, I'm going to tell you. I created some craziness, and so did these children create a lot of craziness. And, you know, I always felt like because these men didn't really step up and really didn't take on the true supporting role um, as, as, as a father can, um, I felt like I had to make up for it. And I really did feel through many years of raising these children that I had to put me second and me always last you know it's like the 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 clo the money went for the clothes for them or the food and and these kids were not um they were not demanding in a way they they you know they so totally didn't ask for a ton of stuff or anything like that but i was always felt like they had to be first and i always was last and second and and then in caring for my family or or people that you know i cared about i was always putting them first and always putting them first and I, I was putting myself last. And just a couple of weeks ago, I was speaking with my daughter, who now is 18 and a beautiful soul and being in the world that I just absolutely adore. And she's going to be on the radio show with me soon. I can't wait. <laughs> but she actually said to me, you know, we were talking about different things that we've created over the last couple of years that I've created and she's created and, and how we've moved, um, that... She actually said, Mom, I just love how happy you are. And she must have said it, guys, like four or five times. Mom, I just, I l absolutely love how happy you are. And and it was really from making me the most important person in my life. It was being powerful and influential in the choices that I was making for me. And it was really for me 
the dominatrix energy, I can't even follow everything that's going on in the chat room right now. I can't even stop to read it. I'm going to have to read it on break. You guys are cracking me up. I'm only seeing a few words. Anyways, you've got to come join us in the chat room. It's too much fun. Um, Pock and pod too much. I will have more. Um, but it's really only been in the last few years that I've been saying, you know what, no matter what, I am having this. I am having this. I am having the joy. I am having I am having the love. I am having the the touch. I am having the taste. I am having the experience. I, w- I was actually saying to Rhonda earlier today um, that there was a number of years ago, just a couple of years ago, that you know I had created absolute freaking chaos in my life, total lack, total pathetic energy I was being in. And sat one day, I can see myself sitting there, and I thought, I am going to die a very sad, very sad person if I don't get to see the world. And I really, in those 10 seconds, thought that I would never see the world. I thought I would never be anywhere. I would never travel anywhere. And do you know when that was, guys? That was literally two years ago. It was like, it, it, it truthfully was probably like May of 2013, that I thought that. And since that time, I have to Costa Rica twice. I've been to Paris. I've been to Venice. I've been to Barcelona. I've been to Denver, Vancouver twice, (laughs) Texas twice, Galveston today. Like, how does it get any better than that? And, you know, none of this is true. None of this shit is true and can totally be changed when we start to make the demand. When we start to see that anything truly, truly is possible. So, you know, what would it take for each and every one of you that are listening for you to begin to demand, I will have more of what I desire. I will not, I will not, as Dr. Wayne Dyer says, I will not die with my, with my, with my um, song left in me. What would it take? Is there something that you have going on in your life that you want to change? Is there something in your life that is not happening that you want to happen? Even if you don't have a cognitive awareness of what it is, do you know that it's not enough what you've created up to this point in your life? And you do know that you create everything in your life, right? Is there something that you desire more of? Is there something, someone, some creation that you want to have that you've been buying, you cannot have, that you are now ready to have? And everything that doesn't allow you to have it immediately, even in your knowing, can we destroy and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pot, all nine shorts, boy, and beyond. Here's my definition of being the dominatrix of your life. Get the fuck out of my way. I'm having it now. Get the fuck out of my way. I'm having it now. It's about... (laughs) It's about... (laughs) It's about standing in your space. This is not about pushing at anybody else. When I say get the fuck out of my way, I'm talking about the the pathetic, the less than, the limitations that I bought, okay? It's about standing strongly in my space and leaning into my life and going, no, no more stopping me. I will have this no matter what. It's turning over every goddamn rock that there is and finding what's going to work for me. It's about willing to be vulnerable and dropping on all fours and bawling my eyes out and going, this is not working. Please, somebody help me. It's putting my hand up and saying to a friend of mine, I'm stuck. Please, come, come, come clear this. It's about willing to ask. And it's about willing to acknowledge that I have what it takes to create what it is that I desire. And so do each and every one of you. Any place, any space that you still have locked into your being, your body, 
any energy of pathetic. Can we please all now destroy and uncreate it all? Ah, right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pot, all nine, shorts, boys and beyonds. Okay, we are going to go for a break. And if we could queue up another commercial on top of the one I asked for, please. And we will be back and we're going to continue to talk about how we can change from being pathetic to dominant and how neither choice is wrong. You are listening to Christine McIver on Inspired Choices Radio on a to zen.fm and we will be right back. Many of us make choices in our lives based on the past or what others think. What would our lives be like if we made our choices based on what we desire in this moment? By tuning into Inspired Choices Radio Show with Possibilities Coach Christine McIver, you'll receive tools and inspiration you can use to do just that. You are an infinite being with infinite choices. Are you ready to create the life and living you truly desire? Listen for Inspired Choices Radio Show. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? Being visible, being social, being heard. What desires are you ready to create? Would you like to take the next step to creating a potent presence on the web? Would it create more possibilities and expansion in your life? Beingvisible.ca offers website, social media, radio show creation, and more. Creating with consciousness, bringing the energy of you to your audience. Are you ready to connect with your audience clearly, regularly, and with ease? Christine MacGyver and Carol Glover work with individuals and organizations to create a powerful presence on the web. Personal attention and one-on-one training creates the ease with expanding you. Are you ready? Connect today at beingvisible.ca. This is Inspired Choices Radio Show with Possibilities Coach Christine MacGyver. To participate in the program today, please call toll-free in the U.S., 815-880-8255 talk or Canada 613-800-8736 or you can Skype us our Skype name is a2zen.fm you can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to christine at inspiredchoices.ca now back to the program welcome back everyone Wow, tonight, being pathetic or being dominant? <laughs> and how does it get any better than this? So we have a great question in the chat room I really like. How many people won't choose the dominating energy because it intimidates others and they are aware of it? And for whatever reason, they judge intimidation as a wrongness. So friggin' true. When I step up and I be the strength, the knowing, the expansion and the this is who I be energy, it really freaks a lot of people out. And how much are they freaking out because they're not willing to be that in whatever energy they are for them? How much have they actually bought into stepping into all of them will actually be too much and they'll be judged by others around them. How much of you has been judged as a wrongness? And this is funny. This is just kind of coming into my mind. How much have we all been judged since we were very, very little? And we started from when we were just little kids, like three years old, five years old, or whatever, 
we started to be somebody else and then we were getting judged over the top about all of that, which isn't truly who we be. So how much were we being false energy that people could pick up on, right? And when they picked up on it, they judged it because it wasn't really who we are. So when you are being, truly being who you are, and you're being in the joy of who you be, and you're being in the possibility of who you be, how much does that actually ring true for people? How much does that actually, it passes the sniff test, you know what I mean? Like a dog, when you're being, when you're scared, (laughs) and you're not really, um, you you don't want a dog to know that you're scared, how much does a dog know that that's bullshit, (laughs) right? So you don't pass the sniff test. Well, well, energy is our first language. So how much of that is, is pe- you're not passing the sniff test with people around you, so they're going like, what the hell is that? And, yes, there is that piece where they're judging you because they're judging themselves. I'm not saying that that's not there as well. But let's just look at you. Let's just look at where are you being pathetic, i.e. not being yourself, and resisting being dominant that is actually cutting off everything that you desire to create in the world. And tell me something, please. And I can't see the chat room right now because it's just not working for me. Um, tell me, please, how much, how many of us are are choosing not to be dominant because we are afraid of our own potency? How many of you are afraid of your own potency? How many of you have decided that if you are dominant, that if you are potent, you might actually be too much for everybody? Is that working for you? What really, really is going to happen to you? Are you going to die? Are you going to blow up if you are dominating your own life? Remember the definition of being dominant It's being powerful. Again, guys, this is not about putting anybody else first or last. This is about choosing you. Do you know what it meant to me when my beautiful daughter said to me, you're just so happy, mom. You're just so happy. To have a child look at you and say that, not from a, judgment energy not from a like oh my god i can't believe you actually did it just really from a gratitude it was all gratitude energy when i have clients say to me how joyful they are from the work that we've done together or how much i've contributed to their life and their being by being me when i have people comment about oh my god you're just having so much fun in the world and you're traveling. I love watching you where you're traveling and everything. I'm not doing it for anybody else but me. When they are commenting, when they're making these statements, do you know how much joy that creates for me, that, that my joy is creating that for them and creating more joy in the world? Is it not what you desire is to create more joy in the world? We all want more money. We want more play. We want more uh, uh, of all of these quote-unquote things. But doesn't it often come down to having more joy in our lives, whatever we define the joy as? What if you, being the dominant energy for you in your life, making you the most important, and making you the most important doesn't mean making everybody else, you know, seven steps behind you. It just means sometimes I'm going to say yes to me, which means saying no to you. What if you choosing that, actually creates the joy that's required in this world that we're all looking for. What if you, as Dr. Dane here says, being you is actually the change every single one of us is dying to have? Would you be willing to step up for you Would you be willing to be the dominant energy? Would you be willing to lean in and say, this does not work for me anymore. I am fucking having it all. No matter what it is, would you be willing to turn over every rock? Would you be willing to ask more questions? Would you be willing to acknowledge when you're being pathetic and laugh at yourself? 
Would you be willing to raise your hand and ask for help from someone? Would you be willing to acknowledge when you are being brilliant, when you have created something, even if it's just laughter? Would you be willing to see the brilliance that you truly be? Would you be willing to be kind to you? What are you willing to be and do so that you can create more in the world? More of what this whole world is dying to have. And I use that word very specifically, dying, because they, everyone in the world is dying for more. And they're dying to get out faster because they're not having it. Are you willing to be the contribution you truly can be? I absolutely love the energy of being the dominatrix of my life. Because it means that I get to choose for me knowing that when I'm joyful, the people around me, the people that I care about, the people that I adore, the people I love creating with, they too, I'd be the invitation to them to to choose more for them as well. So Carol says, she's got a question in the chat room, I really don't desire much more. Well, maybe not specifically anyways. Since life is pretty freaking awesome as is, how does getting better than that? So how can I be dominant in my life when there's nothing I really demand? Hmm. Life is getting better on its own, it seems. Really? Is that true? Or is that a conclusion that it's getting better on its own, Carol? So, Carol, let's take you the amazing being you truly be, let's take you out of the picture. Literally take you out of the picture. So what's being created without you there? Carol, for those of you that don't know, is one of my very closest friends. She and I have created a number of things together and she was actually the first person that started to produce with me on A to Zen. And as much as I am very much in your face, loud and out there, Carol is very subtle, very quiet, extremely sarcastic. So we both have that in mind and in common. But Carol is very much a very much more subtle energy. So she said yes and yes, something else. Did anyone hear Carol's show this morning? Just saying. I did not hear the show this morning, and I'm sorry, I was playing in the ocean. My bad. <laughs> um, Katrina says, um, yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. She has nothing to do with it and her life being awesome. <laughs> Somebody said, Carol said, bitch. Oh, my God, that is so funny. I think it was the bitch about being in the ocean. <laughs> hey, you could be here with me, too. Carol, if you weren't in your life, Nothing would be being created in your life. Each and every one of us have to be in our life. Now, you don't have to have the same dominant energy that I have. But, Carol, you've been desiring more and you have continuously been willing to put yourself out there in different ways that you weren't comfortable at first. Are we misidentifying, Katrina says, are we misidentifying dominatrix as loud fuck you energy? Hmm, do you think maybe? Good question, Petrina. I would say, yeah. It's not the ener- it's not that you have to be like me, right? Because there's only one me. You're not going to be like me and you're not going to be like the person next to you. But it's the energy of not stopping, of not taking the less than. Katrina says, yes, what if dominatrix can be subtle like Carol, still demand energy, just different? Absolutely. That's exactly what it is. But it's that energy of no matter what, I am having this. No matter what, I am having this. I'm having this. A child doesn't stand up with, you know, a baby doesn't stand there with a whip and chains and scream and yell. This little, these little beings are saying, I'm having this, and they're going to do whatever's required to have it. Some of them are going to cry really, really loud. Some of them are just going to stay awake all, like, all night long and just 
Just stay awake. They're going to play, but they're going to stay awake. They're going to get what they're going to get. They are willing to have what they want, what they desire. How many of us are not willing to be the demand to have what we desire? And what does that actually create? If you're not willing to have what you desire, this is going to sound funny, but why the hell did you come? Why did you why did you embody? Did you really embody to drag your friggin' body through this lifetime? To be pathetic? To be sad? To be frustrated? To live in lack? To live in anger? Did you? Is that why you came? I think not. And if you did, good on you. Have a good life. See you later because we pro- you probably won't tune into this radio show again because that's not who I be. <laughs> if you are willing to choose more for your life, stay tuned because there's going to be a lot more of this coming on my radio show. I'm done playing small. And I'm done being in the energy of people that are not willing to choose up. Really step up. And I don't have a point of view how much of a step you take. But what I do know is that the more that we stay in our quote-unquote comfort zone and we don't ask for more and demand more, even if it's just more laughter, we actually contribute to the less than in the world. I came here to show that life can be a different possibility. And I do that through the demands of, yes, I will have more. No matter what, even if I'm having a shitty day, you know, I may stay down in my muck for a day. I may stay down in my muck for a week. But then I'm like, okay, this changes. This is bullshit. I'm not, this is not right. This is not the true being that I truly be. So Carol says, so just having my life and choosing next and next and next as I go, choosing for me, is that it then? Yes. Are you willing to be the demand to have what you desire? Are you? Are you willing to have more? (sighs) Petrina says, yeah, wow. Not everyone is willing to have an awesome life and choose and then choose and then choose again. That is being dominant in your life. Exactly. It's, it's that energy, however it shows up for you. So here's, here's a test. Okay? Whether you are someone who is boisterous and outgoing and has a loud volume like I do, or you're someone who is more subtle and is more maybe under that loud energy like Carol, or anywhere in between there, I want you to ask yourself right now, is there any area of your life, any space in your life where when you look at it, you have a wish of something different? Your money, your body, your career, your business, your relationship your play, your fun, your joy? Is there any of those areas and anything else that is coming to mind? Is any of those areas come as, oh, I wish that was better. And everywhere you're searching and you don't want to say, let's just try to upgrade all that. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shorts, boys, and beyond. If you have any areas like that, in your life, would you be willing to flow some of this dominatrix, most important, making it powerful, just for me energy into it to make the demand that something changes? Would you be willing to do that? In you having more, do you know that you actually add to more of what is possible in the world for everyone? I'm choosing steak for dinner. Yay, Keisha! How does it get any better than that? Oh my gosh. This is so... This is one of my favorite shows. Uh, I love talking about this because, you know, not just for anybody else on the line, but for me, it, it reminds me again to step in, to step into more and more and more. If you're someone that is desiring more in your life, 
there are so many amazing people in the world that are contributing to the possibility of changing what's not working for you. And I've just got to say that the tools of access consciousness that I work with, that my friend Rhonda works with, that Carol and Keisha and Petrina and all of these amazing people in the world that they work with, these amazing people and these tools combined together make the possibilities happen so much faster. And whether it's a phone call, whether it's a one-on-one session, whether you work with these people, myself, for a month, three months, you come to a foundation, come to a level one class, come to a bars class, come to a bars trade, this begins to change everything. You choosing for you, you creating more in your life, you change it for those around you. The more that I have been making the demand of me to show up for me and create my happiness and not buy into the pathetic bullshit that I've bought into in the past starts to change it for the people around me. And I have seen it with my children. My son, Jordan McIver, (laughs) he never listens to the show, so don't worry, he won't get mad. He knows I do it anyways. He lives in and has moved um, to Europe three years ago. And... You know, at first he thought I was, well, he's always thought I was off my rocker. But at first he thought all of this work that I do was crazy. And my daughter, she didn't really want to have a whole lot to do with it either because, you know, she just likes, okay, mom's a little off the rocker because it wasn't the mainstream. But as the two of them have seen me get happier and happier, and that has flown over to them energetically, their lives have begun to get happier and happier. I haven't been sharing the tools with them. I haven't been quote unquote coaching them because they were really in no thanks energy. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm just going to choose for me. And I've been doing that. They have been changing their lives. So if there are people in your life that are in some really shitty places, you actually choosing more for you can change it. Please go to accessconscious.com. Find some people in your area that you can connect with, you can play with, you can change the world with the people and these tools. It's absolutely phenomenal. Accessconscious.com, inspiredchoices.ca for me is where you can connect with me. I'd love to hear from you. Please let me know if any of this rings true for you or if anything changes for you from just listening to some of this, what would you be willing to do for you that would change the world? And I just want to say that one of the things that I'm getting, one of my gifts that I'm willing to put out there is to tell people that I am absolutely amazing at looking at what you would be brilliant at creating in the world. What is stopping you and how we can change that at the speed of light. So if that sounds like something you would love, you'd love to know more of, (laughs) oh, that's for sure. If you would love to know more of, please connect with me because it is just the most playful thing for me to do that with people. I love to talk to creations. I love to talk to radio shows. I love to talk to radio show creations, everything. Uh, I just know talking to these creations is, is play for me. It's like playing in the ocean. So Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Thank you, everyone, in the chat room for playing with me. And thank you for all of the listeners for being here and choosing more for you. What else truly is possible? And remember, you can always make another choice. The world that you are creating is in your hands. Anything is truly possible. We will see you next week. And until then, just know that right now I'm going out to play in the ocean again. And yep, I chose it. Bye for now, everybody. Thank you for choosing to listen to Inspired Choices Radio Show. Christine McIver will return next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on A2Zen.fm. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by making the choices that bring you all that you desire.